In 2008, when the economy was crashing, a lot of people were losing their jobs, and I, I lost mine as well. I had just turned a little over 50, so I went back, acquired the diploma. At the same time, we kept looking for a farm. It had just naturally been uh, transitioning to herbs. I was going through school for herbalism. The more we learned about them medicinally, uh -huh. um, culinary, um, the way that you could do companion planting with them. Our motto right there is as organic as possible, that's all we're going to do. We're, we're very dedicated to that. Uh, the doctors told me you need to give up some stress. They said you've got to back off of something. You've got to let something go. Okay, so two years after I finished getting my horticulture diploma, I went back to school and got my certification as an herbalist. And I wow. got to work under Rosemary, I got to study under Rosemary Gladstar, and okay. which was a wonderful experience. <laughs> Who is that? Rosemary Gladstar is one of the, probably the founding herbalist of, of um, the America. Okay. Uh, she started in California. She grew up with it in her family and helped develop herbalism in the U.S. and get it to be well known again. Most well known leading herbalist in America. When? Did you buy this place? We bought the farm in 2010. And you have a degree in horticulture. I have a diploma in horticulture. A di what's the difference? Depending on how long you go to school. The okay. diploma was uh, so many years, the degree is many more years. Why did you get a diploma in horticulture? Uh, well, we knew that in 2008 when the economy was crashing, a lot of people were losing their jobs. And I, I lost mine as well. Okay. So the company went under. So what we decided to do instead of me going out and uh, getting another job is, uh, and I worked at a nursery at the time. Okay. I'd, I'd always, I'd worked with nurseries off and on for years. My, he wasn't my husband then, is now. He was like, you need to go back to school and finish your horticulture. He said, it's a perfect time. The economy's not doing well. You're not gonna get paid much if you do find a job. Everything's not looking good that way. And yeah. he said, it's a perfect time to go back to school. So I did. Wow. So I went back, acquired the diploma. At the same time, we kept looking for a farm. And we found the farm. The year we purchased the farm, I finished my diploma, and I, we also got married. Wow. So everything just kind of evolved. So we moved to the farm. Well, it's a long story about the whole farm anyway. But um, anyway, we eventually moved to the farm, and we got it started on the gardening and getting it going the way we wanted. We always knew we wanted to do organic. We knew that we wanted the most healthiest way to do it with working with the soil and doing everything naturally. It, it, like I said, it's been a very evolving process here on the farm. You started the farm with vegetables with the intent of like a CSA or like farmer's markets? Where were we you? We did farmer's markets. Okay. We did farmer's markets and we went with those for many years and did really well uh, up until COVID. And by the time COVID hit, we had we were really turning into a complete herb farm. And you just naturally had transitioned. We into had just herbalism. naturally been uh, transitioning to herbs. Herbs you can grow year round, different seasons for different herbs. Okay. Pests don't seem to care about them. We get a bunny rabbit now and then, but okay. not a big deal. And uh, we even took all the fences down around the gardens that were that we had fenced for the vegetables to keep the wildlife out, we've taken those down because there's just no threat of them with us. It's just been um, a wonderful experience doing it that way. That's really cool. Yeah. Now you said it's the climate, the soil, just kind of everything environmentally mm -hmm. led you into the herbs. Mm -hmm. What specifically was that? Well, the herbs were something we were also interested in early on. And we started with uh, companion planting with the vegetables. Oh, like so, to deter pests and to insects deter pests. and stuff. Okay. And it worked wonderfully. And so the more we looked into the herbs, and, after, and as I was going through school for herbalism, the more we learned about them medicinally, uh -huh. um, culinary, um, the way that you could do companion planting with them. And it was just, I mean, really, there's just really nothing herbs can't do at some point or another yeah. and one herb can do many different things and several herbs you know you can put them together to work together they're compatible it's just it's its own little world yeah its own little language that's really cool mm -hmm. so I, I just find that so interesting that and we don't have to say exactly age but later in life Oh, yeah. you added a degree mm -hmm. and then you added herbalism. This isn't something that you just started doing right out of, you know, no, high no. school or college or, or whatever. No, I was, uh, I had just turned a little over 50 when I finished the diploma. Okay. And uh, a few years later, the herbalism and yeah, it's the 
third act. <laughs> I love it. Okay, let's go this see them. This is our second biggest prop house that we built. Uh, the first one we had was much smaller and had worn down over years. And so my husband designed and built this one with everything intent that we would need to have in it. So this is your propagation house? This is our propagation germinating house. Hey, Chris. This is Hi. Chris. Hi, Chris. Ooh, it's so warm in here. Yeah, it is warm. <laughs> this is where we do our propagating. We use sand for a medium. Ooh. So we can just clip things and we can st clip and stick yes. from existing plants. We'll see how these are doing. And then you can just pull their roots out really easily. Uh-huh, just very gently. You have roots. Look at that. Uh-huh. And so it has a misting system that goes off every 20 minutes for like 15 seconds. There's holes in the bottom of the containers so that they have to stay moist to regenerate the root. And so we do a lot of the planting, the sticking here on the propagating. It, this is how we get these started. When they get, when the roots get so big, we take them out and we bump them up over here, which is what Chris is doing right now. You're taking them from the sand and putting them mm -hmm. in here. Mm -hmm. And we put them in three inch pots. When they get so many leaves on them, it's time to bump them up and then mm. uh, they can flush out nicely in these and these get moved up into the bigger greenhouse. They'd stay down here as babies on the heat mats until they get big enough, bumped up, and then they get moved. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Chris, how are, how are you here? Family or are you just uh, an employee or? Family friend, yeah. Family friend, yeah. okay. How long have you been working with them? Uh, it's been over 10 years now. It's, it's, I think yeah. it's about 11 or 12 years mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So kind of since the start? Yeah. Then, yeah. wow. Mm -hmm. He, he awesome. went off and finished his degree in college and then he came back and he, he started working for us again. Mm -hmm. Chris is also a musician. Yeah. Sweet. So this is like your your day job and then you're in the limelight <laughs> at, at night, huh? Yeah, you can say that. Okay. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Yeah. Well, this is really cool. So you said that your husband designed this. Mm -hmm. He built this, designed it with everything that we would need and it's worked perfect for everything we have. We have shade cloth we put on it in the summertime so it's not as hot. Um, then we have the ventilation system which is hooked up to a timer with heaters and when it gets to a certain point that comes on and blows out the excess heat okay. and gives it airflow. Wow, so this isn't like a kit no. that you would buy? No, this wasn't a kit at all. This He designed this one himself. He, he measured all the tables because this heels on a slant so these tables all have to be at a certain height for your body convenience so that it's not you're not bending over we the one we had before we had we had our table stacked up on cinder block blo cinder blocks and pallets mm. and so those were our tables that we used at that time in the old prop house so on this one he, he made these and they're just more poles mm -hmm. like it's just the same yeah. these are yeah they're poles the yeah with wood and wrapped in plastic and then heat mats on top very cool. Yeah. So do you buy your seeds or do we you? Do. We, well, okay. we do both. We buy them and then we also collect from our own plants. Mm -hmm. So we always buy organic source seeds to get started on something. That's, that's just our motto right there is as organic as possible. That's all we're going to do. We're, we're very dedicated to that. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So then where do they go from here? This is all clover. This is a cover crop. Something has to be in there. So we always put a cover crop in there because you're feeding, you're constantly feeding the soil. You know, when you go through farmlands in America and you pass these big farms on the, on the highway or wherever, and it's just nothing but barren field, there's nothing feeding that soil. That's dead soil, literally mm -hmm. dead soil. And they're putting in a lot of uh, synthetic fertilizers and chemicals to boost up those plants. These are all done with nature, with the soil being fed naturally. Twice a year, we send off for soil testing. We use Logan Labs LLC. They do a really good job of testing our soil and telling us what we need, mm -hmm. what it's missing. And then you take it, we take that test from Logan Labs and we send it to Abundant Growing, okay. a lady that she's a scientist and she will analyze your soil and she will tell you to the exact amount of what is you know what is missing an exact amount of how much you need for the size of your garden so you're adding amendments amendments which is which are the minerals and the natural minerals that need to be in the soil uh, to help the plants grow naturally yeah okay. and sometimes the earth like can't reproduce that amendment anymore 
like boron. It can't reproduce boron. So we always have oh. to find a, an organic source to put the boron back in. Okay. And when we started using abundant growing to analyze our soil and following her suggestions, our yield tripled the first year. Really? Yes. Uh, is was, that expensive? No, she's not expensive. She is. She only charges like ten dollars to analyze your soil. Oh wow! And she even encourages you to have all your neighbors come and use your site, so they don't have to pay the ten dollars. She's just trying to encourage people to help the earth regrow. So that's what she's doing with her time on her part. That's really cool. So yeah. Or is adding the amendments is that a pretty big chunk of change? That can add up depending on what condition your soil is in. That's going to be the big thing. So this is a greenhouse that we built after after Hurricane Zeta hit, it took out, we had two high tunnels and a long greenhouse here, and it took out everything. And yeah. so we took spare parts from those, rebuilt this one. Okay. And rebuilt that one. Okay. And that way we did not have to uh, put so much money into buying, b rebuilding new ones. So this one will be full by springtime. Okay. The sides come up and down. The cooler plants go in this one so that they can uh, they don't need the heat as much. And then we have big water tanks in there that collect the sunlight, hits it, and heats that up, uh -huh. and will naturally help to heat it up at nighttime. This one used to be 80 feet long, and now it's half of that. Why is that? Well, that was after Zeta. Okay. So tore it up. It took this one down, yeah, too. Yeah, it took this one down. Wow. So, but it's not bad in here. Like No, it's not. Uh -uh. It's not hard to get yeah, in and here. And the fans have already kicked on, that little fan over there. And so... In about a month, this house is going to be full. We've got, we've already got it started with rosemaries, mints, different kinds of thymes, Tulsi basils, elderberry. The hurricanes having a hard time with these. And in this area, that's not really something that's been brought up yet, but how do you handle a hurricane? What do you it, do? Well, with a hurricane, we can take, we can take the plastic down and we can take that down and weigh it down so it doesn't blow around. That way, when the wind does come through, it doesn't tear up the frames. Uh, the plants, if they're on the ground, just so there's no tornadoes, they will stay where they are. Really? They will stay where they are. But if there's a tornado, that, I mean, it's, that's a whole other story. Okay. And that's what happened during Zeta. They were predicting that when it hit to be like a hurricane, almost a one, and it ended up being a high three. Which one is low. Yes, one is low. Ended up being a cat three, and wow. we didn't take this down. Oh, so no. that ended up wrapping around the, these and ripping them all down. And there, you could see through our woods where it looked like it could have been a possible tornado going through because there's like a line, straight lines of some trees coming wow. down. These, being in the state of Mississippi, because these are not permanent structures, you cannot get them insured. So oh. there are some really big growers around here that have huge, huge, you know, 100 acres places with greenhouses and those are not insurable. So if you get hit, you take a hit. Oh, so man. when a farmer says they're not gonna get rich, they're not gonna get rich. Wow. <laughs> it, I mean, there's always a cost expense. Now, I know we said it in passing, but we talked about cover crops a minute ago. Mm -hmm. what, are you, what do you plant here when it's not cover crop? So we have evolved, like I said, we've been evolving over the years. Mostly what we're planting now is our turmeric. We, we make turmeric products. What we grow, we make the products with, and we also sell the live plants. And so most of the gardens anymore are turmeric. Like what, those stalks there, those are all turmeric. And in the winter time, they go deciduous and die back, but the, they're still perfect in the ground. So we store them in the ground until oh. we need them, we dig them up. And then this garden next year, we because we also do, we have a big tea line. We have a nice tea line and we grow the herbs for the tea lines. And so this year, they were in that garden last year. This year, they're gonna to rotate to this garden and we'll have our Tulsis, our different kinds of Tulsis, our Mullins, our Spilanthes, our Hibiscus, Roselle. Those are, those are some of the ones that'll go in this garden. Okay. And we do long rows of them. And these are all what you call cut and come again. You let okay. them grow. You can go out and you can trim them and take what's there and you can make the tea with them mm -hmm. and then it regrows. So all season long, you're cutting and collecting, cutting and collecting, and it makes it good. And then we have our ones that we harvest that are stri strictly from the woods, like we do yopon and it grows wild. It only grows in the whole world. It only grows in Southeast America. Really? So it's, uh, and the Indians introduced it to us. It's what they used during the Civil War for coffee. It has a caffeine in it, really? but it has loads of benefits, herbal benefits, antioxidant. And so you just harvest that from 
the woods naturally. Mm -hmm. We harvest that one. That's called when you harvest something out in the woods on its own like that. That's called mm -hmm. wildcrafting and wildcrafting. And so we harvest that out of the woods ourselves. And that's then really cool. um, after we collect everything and we clean it, we convert it this container into our dryer for herbs. When we first came to the farm, there was an old double wide here, and we had to get it. We weren't going to live here. We were just going to garden. We live oh. in town. But we wanted to get the water turned on, and they had told us we had to go before the city council, and they said, well, you have to fix the double wide before we let you have power. And we were like, okay, so no power. Six months, we had to manually rebuild it. And that was gutting it, rebuilding it, putting a new roof on it. And we did it ourselves. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, so, and then they let us have power. So after so many years, we decided to build a house. But while we were building the house, we bought this shipping container to store all the house things in it. Oh, okay. Our, and when we, whenever we get something, it's always with a purpose. What can we do with it later? Yeah. So this, he converted and he built it into a dryer, an herbal dryer. And so... He, your husband. Yes. My husband, Jeff, he turned this into an herb dryer. And what you do is, during the summer months, when everything is growing and we're harvesting, this heats up in here tremendously. I bet it does. So it has a dehumidifier. Okay. And then you take these racks, and after you've cut and cleaned your herbs. Oh, that's fancy. You take these, and you have layers of herbs. And then you have the fan circulating, and within just a few days, they're dried and ready to rotate. That's crazy. This will be lined up during the su spring, summer, early fall months, drying all herbs. So now, is this for herbs or is this like, you know, something you put in your closet? No, this is for, this is for, for plants. This Where is did for you plants. get something like that? He went online and he actually was looking for plant racks, plant racks particularly. Kind of like something like this. Yes. And okay. we had, and this one popped up. And this one was much more economical. Yeah. I mean, this was, I think this was like 20 bucks at and the time. And it folds up when you're done and with it. And it folds up for easy I mean, storage. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So that was perfect. So during those months, this thing will stay full and just, we were just rotating out the herbs. And, and are right. you able to just like push them down the line? So yeah, that you yeah know we just line up and, and we also it. label everything. That's very important to always label date and document each herb. <laughs> so, because if you walk into something and you don't know what it is, then it's like, I can't use it. Yeah. You know, it's got to be labeled, dated, and documented. Is our herbs FDA regulated? Do you have to do special things to sell herbs or? On some herbs, they are more regulated. Okay. Um, on sometimes, it's the way you word them. Oh, okay. Um, there are some controversies out there about some herbs, yet at the same time, these are things that people have used forever. Right. The history of herbs is, herbs were what was always used back in the day before medicine came along. Right. So herbs were used in the African, Chinese, indigenous Indians, the Appalachians. They, that was the main thing that people used for healing purposes. And for a lot of it, for nutrition as well. Mm -hmm. So what happened was in the, between the 30s and the 40s, when the government started getting more involved in regulating medicine, they decided that if you want to be a doctor, you have to go to pharmaceutical school. Yeah. And they started, that's when they phased out the herbs. And so the herbs started getting phased out at that point, and now they're coming back. They're starting to come back. Yeah. Some of them are recognized already as really good and beneficial. You know, your turmeric, mm -hmm. your uh, chamomiles, there's so many out there. And then there's, there are some that are, con that the government still keeps controversial and- Makes um, you wonder like if they're so worried about mm -hmm. it, what really is yeah. the benefit here? Cause it sounds like it's probably pretty good. <laughs> it, yes. <laughs> it, now see in Europe, if you're an herbalist, you're a doctor. Here, you cannot claim to heal, treat, diagnose anyone if you're an herbalist. But in Europe, you are considered on a doctor level, and they use the herbs greatly there. Mm -hmm. And there are five herbal companies that are regulated by the governments in Europe that they have to buy for because they know that how they're grown. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're known if they're grown holistically, organically, no chemicals put in them. They're, they're regulated like that. So the rules are different there than here, which is, of course, everybody, each country is different, but it's um, it goes to show 
how things can be treated yeah, differently. Absolutely. Even when they have a bit good benefit. Uh -huh. so. And you've mentioned quite a few times the projects that he's done. He seems to be quite handy, but he doesn't work on the farm full time. No, he, he works on it part time. He has a real job. Okay, yes, <laughs> a yeah. real job. <laughs> yes, we call it the real job. Uh, when we started doing this, we were looking at this as being partially maybe part of our retirement, you know, working toward a retirement project. So that's that's how that all got started with that. You know, he, he goes to work, and but he, he does he does the major designing and building of the greenhouses. There's so many things in the gardens that he is on top of. There's things that he does that I don't do. There's things that I do that he doesn't do. He, he's really good with all the paperwork and all of that, and I'm really good with making things with the herbs. Yeah, so, <laughs> so you're the cook. Yeah, I'm the cook. He, yeah. yeah, he's a bookkeeper. So. <laughs> That's awesome. So, this is your... This is our herb house. Very cool. Yeah, we, uh, we built this one when we knew we were going to start, when we started going more toward herbs, and I, we, I was making everything out of the house, and it okay. was it was getting to the point where the house was overloaded, and so we needed it, it needed its own space. We had a really good friend that unfortunately since his past, but he, he we designed these buildings and he built them for us. Very and cool. His name was Andy and he was just, he was just so good at his buildings. But we, I designed this one how I wanted it and he built it perfect. It smells um, so good in here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it. That's the it. first thing that gets everybody is coming in and smelling everything. Like these are fresh dried herbs and these will all be grinded up and, okay. made, and made into teas. Okay. So these are all teas, all these containers that we've been collecting. I guess is if you smell this one. Peppermint. No, it is. No, what is it? Tempera Tulsi. Oh, I've never heard of that before. Also, it smells kind of minty though, right? Um, or is that just me being completely wrong? Yeah. Oh, I'm just completely <laughs> wrong. Can I smell it again? I know you just put it back on there, but now I really no, want to okay. smell it again. This is Timber Tulsi is also known as holy basil. Hmm. We had a wonder, we had a really good harvest of that this year. This one came out. What is it good for? It's actually good for all of your organs, your memory, your brain, your stomach, your digestion. Really? It is, yes. Timber Tulsi is just wonderful from all of those. Uh, we have stevia, we have skull cap, Krishna Tulsi, passion flower, dandelion leaf. Now just look in here, it looks like you have a really big inventory. How are your sales? The tea sales, the, it's taken several years for the teas to, for people to get used to our teas or, or to know that we have, sell tea and that we grow them ourselves and that we sell them. They, the sales on those have been building very nicely okay. over the years. And so those are, those are just, we're surprisingly, you know, we just kept doing them because we, it's been less than 10 years since we added the herbs completely. Probably it's been five years total of going to just straight herbs. So they've been building Okay, over so time. when you think about the way a business starts, the first huh. five years aren't the easiest. No. So you're you're kind of in that still. Like you're you're almost just over that hump. Yeah. Okay. We we we've made the hump and it's going past that now. So that's good. Oh, that's awesome. That's good. Where do you sell at? Well, because of COVID, we went online. We had we were two weeks out from doing the big herb festival of the year down here. We had our greenhouse up there probably had 10,000 plants. Wow. And they shut it down. They because shut the COVID. festival down because of COVID. And we were looking at all those plants and we were like, we got to do something. Oh my gosh. And we had already gotten on Etsy's like six months prior and okay. we were just kind of not putting a lot on Etsy, but just kind of getting used to it. Yeah. You know, uh, just a few things on it. And my husband went and he put everything on Etsy. We sold out. We what? did it. We, we made it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It was it was pretty good. So we didn't know how we would do online or how it would be received online, but we had, uh, I mean, we did good. And then we also have our own webpage, uh, pjfarmnursery.com. We sell on that too. That's really so, cool. So between the two sites, they've kept us very busy and I have not gone back to the farmer's market. I've wow. thought about it several times, but it takes a lot of work to do that too. So yeah. between the two, this was the best decision for the farm. This yeah. was the one that kept the farm afloat. Now, do you get the oils from your own plants or do you have to buy the oils? I can do both, but okay. I, I do buy them from a reputable company. I only buy, if I have to bring in ingredients, I buy them from a reputable company and they have to be organic. When we were or certified organic for 10 years, we had to, we had to keep paperwork to show where everything came from 
and show that it was true organic. Right. We even would have to get certifications from that company to prove their or their stuff that they were sending us was organic for ingredients. Jeez. So this one is called CBD lotion, and we make this one. And if you have sore muscle, arthritis, mm -hmm. you can. It just takes a little bit. Yeah. You can rub it on, and it gives you about eight hours of relief. Really? Uh, pulled muscles. Yes. Wow. It, it works really, really well. And we have whole tincture lines, which I need to restock because I keep going running out of them. <laughs> we have these are the tinctures as they're brewing, or have already brewed. Okay. They sit over here. This is where this is what I make with the herbs. When I bring them in and I make them, put them into tincture form, like some of them are still brewing. This so has the herb in it. Okay. Are they fermenting or just? It's not a fermentation. It's no. not fermentation. No, it's not fermentation. They they will soak in the medium for four to six weeks, and then you drain them and you have your tincture. Okay. And there's four mediums you can use on tinctures. You can use alcohol, which can give it up to like a 26-year shelf life. Wow. You can use uh, glycerin, and I use an organic vegetable glycerin for the turmeric, and it gives it a sweet orange uh, carrot taste almost. Okay. Because turmeric is so pungent. It, yeah. And so that, that takes away that pungent. Yeah. Uh, you can use uh, vinegar, and you can use water. Okay. And each one will, cause, uh, will allow the tincture to have a different shelf life. Okay. Alcohol being the longest, water being the least. So what do you combine it with? So you do the alcohol and the herbs, mm -hmm. and then is it just that alcohol? Mm-hmm. That's, That's it? That's it. That's okay. It. It's the alcohol and the herb is how I do the tinctures, and That's then really cool. they sit, and then I drain them, and then I have them. That's awesome. So your farm has gone through a lot of evolution. You have gone through a lot of evolution. And starting this venture a little bit later in life, where do you think that you guys are on your farming journey? Are you slowing down? Are you ramping up? Are you maintenance? We are actually, we've tweaked it so much to what works the best for the farm. We almost feel like we're getting it where it actually needs to be with the herbs and what herbs we wanna do. Uh, we get a lot of requests from people to do certain herbs, and if it's not going to be, everything takes uh, an amount of time, money, and energy to do out here. So if, if somebody wants us to grow something, but we're only going to sell one of it, but it takes $50 to produce this thing, it's not in our best interest to do it. So we have learned to go with what sells, what works, what's in demand uh, the most, and so we feel like we're getting that down to a fine art almost, to the point of we're going to stay with that and see how that goes. Because we've been tweaking it so much, we, we're see, we're now seeing where it's going. Because you're basically in year five. We're in, I, I mean, you've been here, herbs. yeah, with yeah. the herbs, yeah. right? 14 years on the farm, yeah. but about five years with just the herbs. And so we want to go with the path that we are on right now, yeah. and we want to keep it going and see how it goes and see, you know, see how it goes, I mean. But farm profitability is where you want it, where you like it to be. As of yeah. right now, at farm profitability would be the thing to keep it going. We've had at times we've had more workers with us, and now we're just to, down to the one. Uh, we're trying to turn it more profitable. We used to do internship programs out here where people would come to to work for knowledge. I backed off, backed away from that. Um, Why is that? Uh, the doctors told me you need to give up some stress. They said you've got to back off of something. You've got to let something go, and so the internship program I. I let that go. Like I get my words backwards or oh. uh, I used to go out and I used to do talks a lot yeah. and I let that go. Okay. And so I let the internship go. I stopped doing speeches out, things of that nature because sometimes it, it doesn't click. Yeah. Because when you have a stroke, that part that dies, it has to rewire where your body to, to do. That was something I had to back off of. Yeah, there's, there are some things that I've let go and uh, there are some things Jeff will be like, we can do this or you can do this. And I said, no too much. No, not going to do it. How amazing though that you can recognize that because how many of us, and I'm going to say it, women want to do it all. We want to conquer yeah. the world and how self-aware and humble is it for you to say, nope, I am where I need to be yeah. because this is where I'm best. You have to do that or else you're not doing it for yourself. If you're, if you're giving it a hundred and 50%, that's great if you have the energy and the willpower to do that. But if you don't and you know that you're jeopardizing your own self to please somebody else, you're in trouble.
Because that can only go so far. That can only go so far, and then it turns into resentment. It does. Yeah. Pulling back like that was actually such a good thing for me because it makes me appreciate the farm more. You, I can come out here and meditate. I can take nature walks. I can just go sit in the woods and meditate, and it is such a healing. I can go, I forget the name of it. Um, Forest bathing is fine. Yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But it's, it's such a healing process, and yeah. it's so important. The energy level of the earth that the earth puts out, that the soil puts out, that the trees put out, the, that surrounds us every day that we don't take for what it is, the benefits that it gives us as individuals. When we fill our world up with so many materialistic things that have absolutely really no benefit to us, you replace that with nature in a way that is so benefiting and healing to your own body and soul and mind. And it makes you appreciate just everything you know everything so it's it there is it's not just that we're out here growing herbs and selling herbs and this it's the benefit of the saw of the, of the farm that it has on our soul I, th I think that people have asked me before what would be one of the biggest things that we could all do to actually help turn around the climate problem we do a lot of research and studying and the one thing that I would always say is plant more trees plant more trees yeah, because that is the one thing that will give us what we need the most. The the life of trees is is a fascinating story all on itself. But the hidden life of trees. The hidden life of trees. I just finished that a few weeks yeah. ago. I love, I love that, that book. Uh, that's one of my favorites. Maria Rodell's Organic Manifesto is one of my favorites. It, it's just a a world within a world that you don't see. No, but you can feel. You can feel it if you sit there. Mm -hmm. You can definitely like mm -hmm. feel the tree. Yes, I, I, that sounds really outworldy, but it, I, I believe it, I do. Um, we talked a little bit about where people can buy things from you. We'll throw those links in the description. And if anybody is in the area, I know you're not doing like internships or anything anymore, but um, is there a way for them to message you if they have questions for you? Are you open to that? Or? People, people message us all the time. They, they contact us all the time and ask a question here and there. Is that yeah. like through your Facebook page or? It, it, no, it's through, it's through our webpage. Your website, yeah, okay. our webpage, yeah, they can contact us that way. We don't mind answering, we, we, we love helping anybody that has a question, um, but there, there are times when people have to do their own research. Yeah. Um, there, are, there are times when people want to know a formula or they want to know how do you do this and it's like I can tell you how to do this and I can and a lot of times I do kind of tell them some of it or part of it or all of it and point them in the right direction but when you're working with herbs you really need to know what you're doing yeah you know you, this is not something that you need to fiddle around with and and just have heartedly do yeah because herbs can do a lot of things and if you're looking at it to do one thing for you there's a multitude of things so people need to be more aware and they need to study it more not just have somebody tell them how to do it right they really need to study on it do you have specific resources that you like to go to or or books or manuals oh, yeah. that you reference absolutely uh, I've got uh, all of Mary Gladstar's Rosemary Gladstar's I have several of her books Dr. Christopher uh, he is like one of the old timiest herbalists here and it is a multitude. There are so many herbalists out there, so okay. many good herbalists out there. Well, if you have um, those resources, we'll put those links in the description as well for people okay. to, to take a look at. Sure. Well, thank you again. I really appreciate it. And You're welcome. Um, I just, I'm, I'm excited to go get some <laughs> herbs for you. So let's go get some. Okay. Okay.